The latest game from Jersey Jack Pinball is Guns N' Roses Not In This Lifetime. And I gotta tell you, it is by far the most technically advanced pinball machine I've ever seen or played. So I had to talk to game designer Eric Minier and lead programmer Keith Johnson about the game, how it came together, what it was like working with Slash. That's right, Slash is credited as co-designer on this game because that dude loves pinball and was involved in every step of the way. Let's talk to Eric and Keith to find out more. Very early on, like day one of the project, I got to have a Skype call with Slash. Talk about his Not bad. his concepts for the game and what he was thinking and what he wanted. And pretty much every day since then, Slash and I have been in contact. The dude is hardcore pinball and so into making this game the best thing it could possibly be. He wanted it to be a concert experience. And so with that in mind, I started sketching out some design aspects of having a stage and having the jumbotron behind it and having the, the lights, the moving lights and, and looking at the way they did, they're not in this lifetime tour. They had these very special like hexagonal panels with their lighting. So I got that in the back, but then the, the integration of actually getting it to feel like a concert is really where Keith brought it to shine. The basic point of the game is to play some pinball, get to the point where you can hear a song and then have your socks blown off by everything that the team managed to do. All the video integration, all the light integration and the shaker integration, even camera integration. So it looks like you're kind of on the stage with everyone. It's, uh, it's a really powerful experience, I think, and clearly something that's never been seen in a pinball before. Obviously, it's not easy to pull that off. How does all that kind of work together? Slash is credited as a co-designer of this game because of how much influence he had. And I'm very proud to have uh, given him that title of co-designer because he absolutely earned it. When we were asking, like, you know, formulating how to make this the perfect concert experience, I, I asked him, you know, what can we do for video? Like, what do you guys have as far as video content from your concert? And so like two weeks went by and a couple hard drives showed up to the office. It was, I don't even remember at this point, six terabytes worth of concert footage. So full high definition, three hour long concerts. And I think we had 18 different concerts to choose from. We also got permission to use all of the animation footage that they generated for their concerts. So everything that plays on the screens while you're there in the concert or while you're waiting for them to come on stage, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars worth of animation time, um, mm -hmm. animation work was given to us as part of this project as well. You know, I play a lot of pinball. I'm, I'm very fluent with the, with the medium, but there's a lot of stuff in this game that I just had not seen before. The thing that pops out right away is definitely the sort of uh, sensitive play field spots where the switches are activated with uh, with touch sensors almost i remember the first time i just put my finger over that sensor i'm just like no what is going <laughs> on right here i just i didn't understand how this was happening it really is is quite amazing can you talk a little bit about how that works how it's implemented and and any challenges that kind of came along with implementing that there were a lot of challenges implementing those those <laughs> sensors <laughs> they use a unique optical technology uh, that transmits and receives a specific wavelength of infrared light. And it doesn't get screwed up by sunlight. There's there's definitely complications, you know, on, on some other sensors in other games that have tried to use this sort of technology where if you play next to an open window or, a, a, you know, a, or over a skylight or something like that, it could, it could screw with your sensors. Or but even just can, using an incandescent flashlight. Right. So lots of design challenges there, but as a game designer, I always want to be able to sense the ball in the least play field real estate impactful way possible. Um, so being able to basically do it all inside a single insert that the ball rolls over is kind of a dream come true. When the ball rolls over this space, not only does it light up the space, but it detects that the ball is there. So we had to develop hours and hours, days, weeks, worth of code time, uh, firmware integration to get these sensors online and communicate over our communications bus uh, underneath the play field. Talk a little bit about some of the, of the other toys that are scattered around on this play field because 
I gotta know how a pair of drumsticks found their way into that right ramp. One of the things that I absolutely pride myself on as a game designer is theme integration. Looking at other pinball machines, you see wire forms, right? Where the ball just rolls down between two wires and drumsticks are big straight pieces that a ball can roll down between. So uh, I sat with my mechanical engineering team. I sketched up, you know, okay, if we make a bracket this way that holds from underneath, screws into the wood, um, we can get a ball to roll over this. And the extra icing on top is that for the collector edition games, we actually got Frank Ferrer, who is the drummer for Guns N' Roses, to sign every one of the Thunder Chuckers, which is his brand of sticks from Vader, um, sign every one of those sticks for the collector edition game. This game and the RGB LEDs and the overall light show that goes on where, uh, you know, all these individually controlled little LEDs, I mean, how does that all work together in a way that really completes this package that is, I mean, you are entranced by this thing. It is absolutely fascinating to look at. Every song we had our audio guy beat map the entire song and oh, wow. there's 21 songs in the game. And that comes out to just under two full hours of music. So <laughs> we're basically taking the time to choreograph every single light to every single beat for two hours of music at, you know, 100 to 120 beats per, per minute. You look at the, the Bluetooth connection ability where, you know, there is... Uh, a way to kind of get sound from the game wirelessly through that uh, interface. There's uh, Wi-Fi in this game. There's Scorbit integration, which is, uh, you know, a kind of virtual leaderboard platform. W where do we go from here with this, with this type of game? We've had headphone jacks on the game, you know, since pretty much day one. But, you know, those are awkward and everyone's got Bluetooth, whether it's earbuds or headphones or whatever nowadays. So getting that kind of support to get the game more modern was definitely uh, important to us. I mean, you know, you get a little bit of lag with the Bluetooth, but it's not, it's not so bad that you notice it. The most important thing by far is the internet connectivity updating. Because before it was, you know, it involved downloading stuff and putting it onto a stick and sometimes making a bootable USB stick and, you know, to, to a lot of people, that's kind of kind of a big hassle. They're the first company to really have fully internet connected, downloadable updates for pinball machines. And I just touched on the uh, the Scorbit integration. I mean, that's something that, especially in 2020, when people couldn't play pinball together, it's like that was something that helped bring back a little bit of community and being able to challenge your friends and play against each other, right? There's three trim versions of GNR, and they are uh, available as they are made. And uh, you know, yeah, I, I've I've talked to a couple of people who are like, "How do I get one of these games?" I know they're starting to become a little tough to find, but uh, they're still coming out, yes. right? Yeah, I mean, right now we're making collectors editions, and standards and limited editions will be available for a long time. Uh, Eric and Keith, thank you guys so much. Uh, appreciate the generosity sending out the game, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Right. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff.